In this video, we're going to learn how to properly grill food. Grilling is a dry heat transfer method. Um, and regardless of the product that we're going to be uh, grilling, today we're gonna to use chicken, uh, but the same principles would apply to uh, any cut that we choose to grill. So, uh, when grilling, it's important to start with a preheated grill. Um, so I'm using a grill pan on top of an induction burner, um, but the same would be true if I was using a gas-fed grill um, or even a charcoal grill. I wanna make sure that my, my grill is preheated. I'm gonna judge that by kind of slowly pulling my hand just over the grill. Obviously my hand is not coming into contact with the grill, but I'm just getting my hand close and kind of feeling for that really hot radiant heat, um, which I am starting to feel now. Um, so if I don't feel that heat, that kind of heat wafting off the grill and starting to get my hand really nice and warm, uh, I know it's going to uh, either need to take a little longer to preheat or I'm going to need to increase my temperature because we do need to start with a hot grill. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of oil to my, uh, my grill here. Uh, I want to use a, I'm going to use an old side towel. Um, I don't want to use a, a nice uh, clean kitchen towel because this is going to be kind of messy and I'll probably uh, destroy the towel. I tend to keep a few towels to use for, for things like this. Um, and I'm just going to lightly grease uh, the grill. This is going to help both uh, make the food not stick, but really um, it's just going to help to clean that griddle, uh, make sure that any uh, remaining particles uh, are, are removed. So I'm going to put just a little bit of oil right onto my rag. I'm just going to run that rag up and down my grill pan here. Okay. So I always want to start with a seasoned product. So I'm going to season just with a little bit of salt and pepper. Uh, grilling also takes really well to marinating, so I could have uh, marinated this product uh, as well uh, instead of just seasoning with salt and pepper. So you can see this griddle, the grill lines run top to bottom. So if we think about this as a clock, 12 would be here, 6 would be here. Okay, so our top, our bottom, 12 and 6. We're going to want to put our product at about 10 and 2, which is, I think, what a lot of us learned in driver's ed, right, where we hold the steering wheel at 10 and 2. So instead of just throwing the product on willy-nilly, uh, I'm going to start with presentation side down. So we always want to make sure that whatever side the customer is going to see is going to be the side that we start uh, down on the grill. Okay, I'm then going to angle my product so that it's laying at about that 10 o'clock position. The top of my product will be facing in that 10 o'clock position. The final thing that I want to point out is you can see this grill, not only could I feel uh, the heat, but I'm starting to see some whiffs of smoke coming off the grill. Uh, and that's exactly what I want to see to know that my grill is well preheated. So I'm going to go ahead, put my chicken down onto the grill, and you can see I have that 10 o'clock angle. You also heard that nice sizzle when I put it down. That's another good uh, indicator that our grill was properly heated. And now probably the hardest part of grilling is this next step. And that process, that, that step is don't touch it. Okay. Um, this is a common mistake that people make when they grill. They want to poke at it. They want to quickly turn it. They want to see what's going on. It doesn't need your help. It doesn't, okay? Um, so we're gonna let this cook, um, hopefully until it's about a quarter of the way cooked, because we're going to do three turns. It's gonna be on the grill uh, four separate times. And I'll show you on the grill what we're looking for that will be a hint that this product is uh, ready to turn. Okay, so um, I can tell that my chicken is probably about ready to do my first turn. That turn is gonna be from the 10 o'clock position to the two o'clock position. And I can tell that for a couple reasons. 
Number one, you can start to see juices starting to come off the chicken, meaning that uh, cooking is definitely taking place, right? We can see that this chicken is beginning to cook. It's beginning to contract a little bit. Uh, also, when I look at the around the edges, I can start to see that there's some browning going on. Okay, so I can see that there's some browning going on. My juices are starting to flow. This is a good indication that my chicken is probably ready for its first flip. What's really going to tell me is when I go to lift up the chicken. When I go to lift up the chicken, it should not be stuck to the grill. If it's stuck to the grill, that means it's not ready to flip. It doesn't want to be forced. As we develop the crust on the outside, it's going to more naturally release from the grill. So if I go to flip my chicken and it's really stuck and I feel like I have to scrape it, it just needs a little bit more time. So let's see, see how easy I was able to pick that up. There was no scraping or prodding. Um, it was just very easy to lift up. And now I've put it back onto my two o'clock position. So from 10 to two. And we're gonna let this cook um, for about that same amount of time. Uh, my chicken's ready for its next turn. You can see the, the changes uh, in the appearance of the chicken. Uh, the juices are really flowing. It's constricted even more. And it looks like it's about halfway cooked. You can see this, this, the way the flesh has changed and the color of that flesh has changed and it's looking much more cooked, okay? <clears throat> so I go and see how easily it lifts up. I have those nice grill marks on either side. Now a, uh, an option, and this works especially well for thicker cuts uh, on an open grill like this, uh, is to use a bowl. And what this bowl does is if I put this bowl on top of my chicken, it's going to create a dome and it's gonna help hold in some of the heat. Um, for a really thin cut like this, um, I may not use a, a bowl. Um, you know, I may use this for a thicker steak where I'm, I'm trying to, uh, you know, get it cooked through. Um, it may not be necessary, but it is certainly an option, especially if by the time you get to that, uh, that turn where the presentation side is up, you go, wow, this really isn't halfway cooked yet. Throw that bowl on top. It's going to help capture that heat and help us cook through. The other thing after this turn that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, swap out my, my tongs. I've been handling raw chicken with these tongs. So I want a fresh set uh, so that I don't have any cross contamination. Okay. So I'm going to let this cook under this bowl uh, until it's ready for our final turn. The only thing I don't like about using the bowl is, you know, so much of grilling is those visual cues that we've been talking about, those juices that we've seen, um, and, you know, the way the meat is contracting and the way the meat is looking. Um, and, you know, when we use this dome, this bowl, um, we can't see that. So uh, to check those visual cues, we're obviously going to have to take the bowl off. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's not as, uh, as easy to judge necessarily. All right, so I want to go ahead and check our, uh, our chicken. Um, so I'm going to use my tongs to move the bowl. The other thing is this bowl is going to be very, very hot. This dome has captured all the heat. Uh, so uh, you're going to want to either have a pair of hot pads uh, or a dry rag to remove the bowl. So I looked at the chicken, I said, well, maybe it's ready to flip. And when I went to flip it, it didn't easily release from that grill. It's telling me, hey, not there yet. Come back in a minute. So we're gonna let this continue to cook and we'll check it again in another minute. Okay, see how even that extra minute made it release so much easier? That's exactly what I want. If I would have tried to force it, uh, a lot of that, some of that crust that I had developed would have pulled off onto the grill. I would have little like chicken strings stuck on the grill, which is uh, not what I want, right? So. I went to go ahead and flip it. It wasn't quite there. I waited, you know, another 30 seconds or so, another minute, uh, and then it was ready to flip. I always want to make sure that I'm checking the internal temperature using a thermometer. Make sure your thermometer is well calibrated. Okay. So chicken should be 165 for 15 seconds. I'm about 170, so we are cooked and that's perfect. All right, 
I'm gonna let this piece of chicken rest just for a couple minutes for a small cut like this. Let some of those proteins, some of those muscles that have constricted uh, relax. And then we'll go ahead and uh, look at the final product. Uh, while it rests, I'm just gonna cover it. Just help hold in some of that heat. So it's been a few minutes and my uh, chicken has rested. Uh, so let's look at some of our quality marks here. You can see I have uh, my nice grill marks on my chicken. It's nice and evenly cooked on the top and the bottom. And when I cut into my chicken, you can see how nice and juicy it still is. See when I press down, you get all those nice juices through the meat. And that's just a product of good method. Right. Um, if I would have, you know, been pressing on the chicken to try to get it to cook faster or turning it 15 times, all of that is going to uh, dry out our product. The other thing is I gauged the temperature of my grill so that I could get my four turns in and it would finish um, on that fourth turn. Right. I was right at 170 degrees. We were shooting for 165 for 15 seconds. If I had cooked this piece of chicken, say, up to 200 or 210 degrees, um, you know, I wouldn't have a lot of that, that moisture. You see, again, you can see just how nice and juicy that piece of grilled chicken is, and that's exactly what I want in my grilled chicken. So, let's go ahead and review. When grilling, we always want to start with a hot grill. Next, put products presentation side down, starting at 10, flipping to two, turning over back to 10, and then to two. Finally, products should easily release from the grill. We should never have to scrape or pry the product off. If we go to flip and the product seems stuck, give it another minute, come back, and see if it more easily releases.